Night probability on a chessboard. Introduction to the question. On an n by n chessboard, a chess knight has eight possible moves. Each knight's move is comprised of two steps in a cardinal direction, left, right, up, down, and then one step in an orthogonal direction. Each time the knight needs to move, it chooses one of the eight possible moves uniformly at random and moves there, even if it would go out of the chessboard boundaries. That is, the probability for each move is 1 over 8. So before revealing this problem, let's make sure we fully understand what a legal knight's step is. So if our knight is located over here in this square, we can move two steps up and one step left. This would be a full legal knight's move. We can move two steps up and then one step right, and this would also be a legal move. We can move two steps right and then one step up, two steps right and then one step down, and so on and so on until we've covered all eight knight's moves. Now, let's note that our knight could actually go out of bounds on our chessboard after executing a legal move. For example, let's say our knight is located over here. If we go two steps down and one step left, which is a legal knight's move, we go out of bounds. All right, now that we fully understand the technicalities of our question, let's dive into the real problem. A knight starts at a square indexed RC and attempts to make exactly k moves, while r and c are between 0 and n minus 1. This means our knight starts in bounds on our chessboard. The knight continues to move until he has made k moves, or has moved off the chessboard. Describe an algorithm that returns the probability that the knight will remain on the chessboard after it has stopped moving. Let's gain some intuition into this problem by considering a simple example. This example will actually help us understand how to reach the solution we want. In our example, n equals 3, k equals 2, r equals 0, c equals 0. That is, we have a 3x3 three three chessboard where the knight starts at location 0, 0 and has two moves to make. Here is our 3x3 three three board, and here is our knight located at indexes 0, 0. So in this example, what is the result our algorithm should return, and how do we calculate that result? Basically, what we need to do to solve this problem is calculate all possible paths from 0, 0 that are comprised of exactly two knight's moves and end in bounds on our chessboard. Then, we need to figure out the probability of each path and summarize the probabilities. So let's do this now manually. In step number 0, because we perform 0 moves, we are simply staying in place. So, our knight will stay at square 0, 0. To perform the first step, we have two options as seen below. We should note that we only want to know when our knight would stay in bounds on our board. So, from now on, we will ignore any knight's moves that would go out of bounds. Again, we should note that the probability for each one of these paths is 1 over 8. Now, let's see what happens in the second move. From here, we have two options to stay within our board, and from here, we have also two options to stay within. Let's summarize what we know so far and figure out our output. So in total, we have four different paths which are comprised of exactly two knight steps that keeps our knight on the board. The probability for each path is 1 over 8 times 1 over 8 equals 1 over 64. Thus, if we sum all, our four paths should then return to 0 0.0625. So, now that we've covered this simple example, we feel that this question is screaming dynamic programming. So, let's transform our intuition into a dynamic programming recursive function. Let f of rc and k be the probability of being on square rc after exactly k steps. Our recursive formula should be the following. In the base case, where we are in bounds on our board and we don't have to make any moves, we simply return 1 because in this case, we are certain to stay within our board. Now, let's discuss the interesting case where we are in bounds and we have one or more steps to make. In this case, in order to figure out the probability of being on square RC after K moves, we will perform exactly what we did in the previous example. So, we are going to start from RC and see what legal moves we can perform that will keep us on our board, and we're then just left to solve the same problem but smaller and with k-1 steps, and we divide the result by 8 because we know that the probability of each step is 1 over 8. So to solve our problem, we just need to calculate f of RC and k, and then summarize all the probabilities from all the entries within our board. Let's see how this is implemented in our example. 
If we start at 0, 0, then the probability to stay within our board is 1, because staying at 0, 0 is our only option that keeps us in bounds. Now, let's see where we can go within our board and then solve the problem again in one last step. We can go here and here, and the probability to go each way is 1, the probability to be on our current location, times 1 over 8, the probability to go each way. Thus, the probability for each new location is going to be 1 over 8. So, up until now, we have performed one step. Let's see the second and final step. From here, we can go here and here, and from here, we can go here and here. And if we calculate the probability for each one of those entries, the probability of the top right entry is going to be 1 over 8 times 1 over 8, which is 1 over 64. In the same way, the bottom left entry is also 1 over 64. Because we can get to the top left entry with two different paths, the probability will be 2 times 1 over 64, which is equal to 2 over 64. So, we managed to calculate relevant entries with our recursive dynamic programming function f. Now, in order to return the correct output, all we need to do is summarize those entries. Now that we're familiar with everything we need to know to solve this problem, let's write the algorithm. In step 1, create two matrices, a sub 1, a sub 2, of size n by n. The reason we create two matrices is because instead of using a three-dimensional array, we will use two two-dimensional ones, a sub 1 and a sub 2, storing the result of the two most recent layers we are working on. a sub 1 will hold the results after the kth step, and a sub 2 will hold the results after the k minus 1th step. In the second step, we initialize a sub 1 at entry rc to 1, and the rest of the entries in both matrices we initialize to zeros. In the third step, we are performing exactly what we did in the example while remembering the results of our computations. So what we are actually doing is executing k times the following. We update, according to the recursive function, the entries in a sub 2, which can be reached with the knight's move from the modified entries in a sub 1. And then what we do is reset a sub 1 to zeros and switch between a sub 1 and a sub 2. So in our example from before, this is now the new a sub 1, and a sub 2 is initialized to zeros. And in the final step of our algorithm, we simply summarize all the entries in a sub 1 and return the result. Let's discuss the runtime complexity and space complexity of our algorithm. When analyzing the runtime complexity, we can see that our algorithm will run in big O of n squared times k. This is because we are executing k times big O of 1 computations on big O of n squared entries. And when analyzing space complexity because we allocate only two matrices of size n by n, then this is going to cost us big O of n squared. So, this was a pretty challenging question, but we managed to learn that creating a simple example can lead us to an intuitive solution, breaking up our problem into smaller problems using DP is easy and intuitive.